Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. On this much warmer day than yesterday, as we gather together to celebrate the love that God has for us and the mercy that God bestows on us always. So trusting in the goodness of God, let's ask God for pardon and peace. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy in us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you. We bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care. They're relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace. They may be defended always by your protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, share your bread with the hungry, shelter the oppressed and the homeless. Clothe the naked when you see them and do not turn your back on your own. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn and your wound shall quickly be healed. Your vindication shall go before you and the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help and he will say, here I am. If you remove from your midst oppression, false accusation and malicious speech, if you bestow your bread on the hungry and satisfy the afflicted, then light shall rise for you in the darkness, and the gloom shall become for you like midday. The word of the Lord. Thank you, Mr. John. Just man is a light in darkness to the upright. Merciful and just, well 
for the man who is gracious and lends, who conducts his affairs with justice. The just man is a light in darkness to the upright. He shall never be moved. The just one shall be an everlasting remembrance. An evil report he shall not fear. His heart is firm, trusting in the Lord. The just man is a light in darkness to the upright. His heart is steadfast, he shall not fear. Lavishly he gives to the poor. His justice shall endure forever. His horn shall be exalted in glory. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. When I came to you, brothers and sisters, proclaiming the mystery of God, I did not come with sublimity of words or of wisdom. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I came to you in weakness and fear and much trembling. And my message and my proclamation were not with persuasive words of wisdom, but with the demonstration of spirit and power, so that your faith might rest not on human wisdom, but on the power of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, you are the salt of the earth, but if salt loses its taste, what can, with what can it be seasoned? It is no longer good for anything but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city set on a mountain cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and then put it under a bushel basket. 
It is set on a lampstand where it gives light to all in the house. Just so, your light must shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Paul is writing in this letter that we heard to the people of Corinth. This is after he had been to Athens, and he didn't really do very well in Athens. He was kind of intimidated by the scholarly people that Athens was noted for. Now, they're very good with words and how they could, you know, convince people, even if something wasn't really all that it was supposed to be. But Paul tried to kind of meet them where they were. And so he sort of came in the back door about talking about Jesus as risen from the dead. And by that time, you know, the others, you know, I kind of dismissed him. And so he didn't do very well there. So now he writes to the Corinthians telling them that he would never make that mistake again. He won't be overwhelmed by human knowledge but divine wisdom will be there with him always. And so he got back to his message as he'd always proclaimed it of Jesus, God's son who died was raised from the dead. And this is the message that he, he proclaimed over and over again, because it's the message that had been proclaimed to him by Jesus himself after he had his conversion on the road to Damascus. Paul for a while was blind. For a while he could not see. For a while he was in the darkness until he got his sight back again and, we, and became illuminated through faith. Like Jesus talks about his, to his disciples today, through the salt of the earth, through the light of the world. What a great calling Jesus gives to not just his disciples, but to everyone. This he speaks to them after the speaking to the speaking to them of the beatitudes that we heard last week, now they have to put them into action. As salt, they add that missing ingredient that makes everything you know wonderful, tasty, delightful. That's what the gospel is all about: being a delightful gift from God of goodness and love. We can't hear enough about God's love and mercy. We need not only to hear it, but to see it in action as well. But also, they are to be light to the world. The world is in such darkness with the violence, the wars, and the hatred, mass shootings, horrible poverty in some of the nations in the world, all these awful things that go on. But they need to see the light of God's love and God's presence wherever they are. Isaiah this morning listed the corporal works of mercy, what it means to be a follower, what it means to fulfill God's calling, God's law, to care for the poor, to clothe the naked, to house the homeless, to take care of the sick, visit the imprisoned, all these things that come our way and way we are able to live our faith in very practical ways. When we come to church on Sunday, that doesn't take care of the whole thing. That gives us the word that we need to hear, the sacrament that we need to receive, to be able to strengthen us for what we will encounter this week. We never know from the minute we walk out the door of the church what's going to happen, whom we'll count, whom we will meet, who will need something from us? How do we respond? We don't have really time to prepare. We just have to trust and have faith in the Lord, that the Lord will give us always what we need to be able to live out the gospel and be able to teach others as we live the gospel out ourselves by showing that we do care for those who are in need in any way and whatever we can do it's a way in which we live our faith and put it into action because that's how God treats us. 
God puts people in our way who can help us when we are in need. It always is something that we share in, but we're called upon to share as well. And in doing that, we come to realize how practical our faith is and how it's, it's present in our life all the time. And we daily have to live out our faith as we respond to other people and do what is right and just. And to help people who right now feel so much in the dark that they can see the light by someone who smiles at them or has time to listen to them or be able to help in some of their problems. We never know what God has in store for us, but we know that whatever it is, that God will be there to help us live it out and to be the difference in the lives of people that we will encounter today. When we do, we give glory to God, for God has involved us in the lives of others. God has given us the gifts to be used for the sake of others, and that God reminds us that when we do these things, God remembers all that we have done, and God loves us for it. And in doing these things ourselves, we show our love for God and our love for neighbor. That we forget about ourselves and put the others first. When we do that, things go well. That's what Paul learned the hard way. But once he learned it, he never forgot it. What the Lord called him to do, who was willing to do, no matter how foolish some people thought he was, he knew in his heart that this was the right and the courageous thing to do. It was a way in which he expressed the faith that he had in the Lord, who not only redeemed him, but forgave him and gave him a whole new meaning to his life. And he lived the rest of his life that way, sharing in that meaning that had been given to him when he was struck blind. But when he saw again, he saw things differently. He saw things now through the eyes of Jesus. And he saw a way in which he could help because he himself had been helped. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess when baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. When we cry for help, the Lord assures us that he is here. Let us therefore pray to him with confidence. That Pope Francis, all bishops, and church leaders will reflect God's truth and love to the world by the integrity of their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the church may continue to be the light of the world, bringing truth and salvation to all nations. We pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. That our Holy Father may enjoy continued health and strength to lead the church on earth, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, and religious life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who serve in the military, that they be surrounded with the grace and protection of the Lord, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are cons consecrated to God by vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience, may they continue to reveal the love of Christ to those they encounter, and may men and women be open to joining them in building up the kingdom of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we let our light shine before others and be a bold witness of our faith, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who have died may be purified of sin and share eternal joy, we pray for those who have recently died and especially for Walter Nagel Sr., Mary Jane Williams, and Christine Reed Goldman, for whom this 1030 a.m. Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. With the cold weather that we've been experiencing, we pray for the homeless and those who are in need, that God will keep them warm and fed, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We offer up all of our intentions through Mary's intercession. Hail Mary, Mary full, full of grace, grace. The, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary Mother, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Friday was the Feast of St. Blaise. So at the end of Mass today, Father Walter and I will be blessing throats. <clears throat>
pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant, we pray, that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Holy Spirit, you gather them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit might, to the praise of your manifold wisdom, be manifested as the church. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us pray together in the words that Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share with each other a sign of God's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, 
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
For those watching Mass from home, we'll pray the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you're present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come lay spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you're already there, and I myself holy to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. We pray the prayer to St. Michael for the safety of so many people throughout the world. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, Cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. As soon as Mass is concluded today, we'll sing one verse of the final hymn, and the Father Walter and I will be blessing throats up at, like when you came to communion this morning. And let us pray now. Oh God, who have willed that we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice, grant us, we pray, so to live that so to live that may one in Christ we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of all the world through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us go and live the gospel. Thanks be to God. Have a great, warm week, everybody. Hopefully.